So last week I got a call from my boss and he told me this. I want you to build me a special dashboard for multiple tables, but you can use only one sheet. It must be able to display all the tables and I don't know what I want to summarize from those tables. And I told him, okay, no problem, let's get started. So I need to work with this file today. It includes multiple sheets and each one of them includes a different sales table for different countries. And I'm going to build a dynamic master table. I can even hide these sheets. The first thing I'm going to do is probably a variable based on the country. And I'm going to add a second variable, which is going to be a selectable field from the table. Because my boss said that and I don't know what I want to summarize from those tables. And in order to solve that challenge, I will need to use a support sheet this time, because I'm gonna have a few variables. The first thing I need to get is the actual list of the existing tables in my worksheet. And it must be dynamic, so once I add a new table, I wanna get it updated in my tables. So in order to do that, I go to the data tab, I hit get data, launch power query editor, right click on the query pane and I just simply create a blank new query. Now I'm going to use a simple M function which is called the excel.currentworkbook. I need to just close the formula, hit enter and voila, I got the list of the existing tables. I don't need a content column this time, I'm going to name properly my query table, it's called table list, hit enter and obviously this is going to be loaded to the Excel Graphiker interface so I'm going to modify one thing in the M code. I'm going to remove the newly created table list. So I'm going to replace the friends with the table list. Once that's done, I hit enter. Then I go to the home tab, close, close and load too. And I'm going to just simply insert as a table on the existing worksheet on the support sheet. I simply hit OK. As you see, I still have the currently created data loaded to the table as well but I just need to simply refresh the table, it's done. And this table is named as table lead. Then I simply just head back to the sheet where I want to build that master table and I'm going to select this cell. I go to data, hit data validation and I'm gonna choose a list. And we are going to use the indirect function to get that newly created range. So indirect, open brackets, double quotes and the name of the range was table list double quotes, close brackets, hit enter. I got the list of the table names in a drop down. I'm not gonna leave it as blank. I close the query pane. Let's align these columns a little bit. And I'm going to use this cell to start displaying my dynamic master table. Since my tables has been renamed properly, so every table named based on the country, it's easy to find them. I'm gonna start equal sign and you're gonna be surprised how easy it is. I just simply start typing the name of the table and the Excel will show me the results. I select the table I want, I hit enter and voila. I got the table content in a dynamic range, but that's not what we want. We want to get the entire table with the headers. So what I do, I hit F2 and I go back to the editor. And what I need to do in order to make it dynamic and get the headers as well, I'm going to remove this table name and I'm going to use the indirect function again. And the formula will look like this. Indirect, my table name should come from the data validation cell, ampersand, double quotes, angle brackets, hashtag, I enter all, angle brackets again, I close the text, the formula, and I hit enter. And as you see, I got the headers in my dynamic range as well. And if I change the table name from the dropdown, then the dynamic range will change it too. But we said we want to have a dynamic variable to summarize values as well. First, I need to get the headers from the dynamic range because that's changing all the time once I change the table name, right? Because each table includes different fields and columns, so those might include different header names as well. So what I'm gonna do here, I simply just select the row, this time the row number 10, where I'm going to have those headers for the dynamic range. Then I go to the formulas tab, I hit name manager, and I hit new. I'm going to name my proper range as header. Then I simply just hit 
okay i close the window then i select this cell i go to the data tab data validation we are going to choose the list again surprise and i'm going to do the same with the indirect function i'm going to enter the new range name and I hit OK. I got all the header names in a dynamic drop down. So let's see what happens if I change a country. Let's choose Mexico. This time it has less headers, right? So I'm going to select this drop down and as you see it gets updated dynamically. And now we need to build a formula which is summarizing the values from a column which is selected from this drop down. And this is going to be awesome. I'm going to merge these cells. I go to the home tab. I simply just hit merge equal sign. And I'm going to start typing a formula called match. My lookup value is going to be this cell where I have the field selected. Then the lookup array is going to be the range I just created, basically the row number 10. Then comma again, the match type. I want an exact match. So I'm going to choose zero. I close the brackets and I hit enter. And if you look at the result, it returned back a number to me. It says five. The value I selected from the dropdown is the segment. So basically what it means, the position of the segment field on this worksheet is in the fifth column. So let's change it to sales. That's in the seventh column on this worksheet. So I got the position, but what I need is actually the name of the column. So if it's A, B, C, D, or whatever the column is. So I'm going to hit F2, and I'm going to extend my formula again. And I'm going to say address, I double click on the formula. So the row number could be anything basically, because the address function will return back the cell reference to me based on the position. So I'm going to use one this time. So I'm going to get a cell reference like E1 or whatever. Then the column number is the actual position of my header I'm looking for. So I'm going to leave that match function as a column number, comma again, and it will list me out all the options I can choose to get a cell reference. This time I need the fourth one, the relative. I close the brackets and I hit enter. I selected the sales column from the field dropdown and I got a value like G1. So the reason why I got the G1, because the row number I entered is the one. So if I select the number 10 instead of the one, then it returns back the G10 as a result. So let's see how it works. Let's choose year. Then it showed me the I10. Let's change a country. Let's choose United States. It has more headers. Let's select gross sales, L10, and that's correct. So our formula works properly, but we are not done yet. I'm gonna hit the F2 one more time, and I'm gonna simply just use a sum function and I want it to come back as a reference so I'm going to use the indirect one more time and the starting position of my range is going to be the entire address formula and what I need to do is simply use an ampersand double quotes colon symbol double quotes ampersand and I will need to copy the address function and paste it after the last ampersand and the only thing I need to change is actually the row number and let's assume I'm not going to have more than a thousand rows in those tables then I close the indirect formula and the sum function and then I just simply hit enter. It returned back the sum of the gross sales from the United States table. I'm going to format as a dollar value. It shows me 8 million whatever. Let's double check the value of the gross sales. I'm going to use this cell. Simply start typing sum. I'm gonna select the entire L column. And here we go. The value is matching. I zoom out a little bit. And as you see, it's 100% dynamic. If I select something from the dropdown, then the values are changing as well. If I want to summarize, let's say the discounts from this table, then I'm gonna get that back. As you see, there is no result because that's text. Let's choose another one like cost of goods. It returns back the number to me. Then I'm going to select another country. Let's say Mexico. I have less headers. Then I simply just choose again another header. And if I want to make this dashboard element to be more attractive, then I simply just go to the view tab. I remove the grid line 
lines, I go to the home tab, I can add some color to those drop downs, then I can go to the row number 10, I select the entire row, I go to the conditional formatting and I can use something like greater than let's say zero, that basically means nothing, then I go to the custom format and I'm going to say I need this border, use this color to fill, I simply hit ok, ok, so let's see how it works, if I select another country with more headers, then it's gonna be adjusted based on the conditions I selected.